Um, let's go to episode three. Um, the introduction to the cowboy ancestor, like right at the beginning of this episode, I thought was pretty cool. She seems badass. I like the old timey like uh, a showcase of like who the Indian police were, and I thought that was. That was kind of cool. The only thing I thought that was kind of bad about it was uh, I thought her eyes had no whites in them and they looked all black. <laughs> and I was like, she looks kind of creepy. <laughs> but like, other than that, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, Yeah, I think like all these like flashback scenes are just like wasted in my opinion. Because it's like, I feel like this show was meant to be much longer than it was. Yeah. And there was probably going to be more of those scenes showing us her ancestors and then like them having more of a role other than like the race Skywalker moment that happens at the end. Like it's just yeah. like looking back on this, it's just like weird. I'm like, Oh yeah. All these, I forgot there was like a massive scene with all of the ancestors in each episode. It's like, it just seems like such a waste. Yeah, and that's that's something too, where uh, that the series doesn't because they don't do an explanation, or sorry, they do an explanation, but they don't build on each episode of what these things mean. Like she does, it just her shows dead, her you shit. that, and then it's like okay, moving on. It's like okay, so um. she <laughs> like we we find out later, like in the last episode, that she gets skills from her ancestors, right? Like everybody has passed down through generations skills like she's the avatar now she has like the memories of these things and she can like do shit and in each episode each memory that flashes to her is giving her a new ability okay and this episode shows like when she's shooting the swing you know she's getting her dead eye from the fucking cowboy <laughs> um and what they don't do though in this and the, I'll, I'll skip honestly ahead. i'm gonna be completely honest with you that was not I did was not even picking up on any of that when I was watching. Yeah. It's probably because I was also playing games on my phone when I was <laughs> doing my watch through this. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I did not even know that. So like those things are not, but they're not explained well to you. Yeah. And it's only because I watched this series now twice, and I just wanted to go. I was going over it like earlier today, and I was like, if they explain this later on when she gets caught up. And she's like hog tied in the closet. She gets free, punches Bonnie in the face for some reason. And she goes and she's making a gun because she can just do that. She has like this now incredible intelligence to create a laser pointing shooting bullet or fucking bolt gun. Right. I was like, oh, she got that skill from her ancestor who was building a gun earlier in the first in the first part of this episode. They don't fucking explain that to you at all. So it just looks like she just got some intelligence to fucking build a, a pea shooter like yeah. out of like out of nowhere. Out uh, of thin but, air, basically. Yeah. But back to like the beginning of the episode, like Scully is trying to riz up Chula. Uh, and then we find out that Chula and him got separated at some point after uh, the, the mom died. And it's like, OK, cool. That's just. Uh, and Chula is continuing to blame everybody else but herself for not helping or talking to Maya after everything had happened. And it's like, fuck Chula, man. Chula is such a badly written character till the very end of the show. And then even then, I'm like, I just don't. I only feel a little bit, of, a little bit of remorse in that scene that she has her redemption scene, a little bit. And but the lead up to that, I'm like, I you're just a hater, dog. Like you were just a straight up fucking hater. Uh, after that part, uh, the obviously bad guy is bad again because he's now fulfilling his uh duty to call in Maya's bounty. And while that's happening, crackheads jump Maya while she's having her her uh ancestor seizure. <laughs> like, yeah, these so fucking... all the all the yokels that work at Uncle Black Crow's skate arena tie everybody up and um it, this is the part of the episode which got really really dumb for me it's like okay <laughs> these guys are trying to turn in the bounty to fisk's guys i guess yeah and then long story short 
Echo and Black Crow and uh well first like Echo kicks their asses a little bit, but Black Crow and Firefighter Lady get tied up and then uh um, Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. We got we gotta talk about how the crackheads hung her up by her detachable leg. Yeah, Upside that's where down. I was going. <laughs> um oh yeah, that happens. Does that happen before? Okay, yeah. This was the thing what I was oh talking about God. earlier with like the weaknesses of the character could come into play in a cool way like they literally take her and tie her up and it, like during the struggle her leg comes off right doesn't that isn't that what happens yeah and then, like when they tie her up in the room they give her her fucking leg back what the fuck is that like that's they're the, crackheads that's the stupidest shit of all time like oh yeah this super like assassin lady that's really good at beating people up Maybe I shouldn't give her the only thing that allows her to do that back. What the fuck? Like I have, that's, I have, that, but no, nah, that's where the writing like went straight out the window. And then also like there was, if they had done the thing where they keep her leg and she's just tied up in that room, it there would have been an interesting opportunity there for her to like have to co come overcome some adversity in like a compelling way and figure out how to get out of that situation without any like bullshit going on and then maybe have her fail and either uncle black crow or um god i keep forgetting bonnie dies yeah she sees one of them get their fucking head blown off and then that would also introduce something called stakes to the show where yeah she has to um face up to some consequences for her actions of mindlessly going after kingpin for no reason but that did not happen yeah but but no um, I have in my notes here, uh, the bad guys are all laughing because she fell from the ceiling. I assume that they know she's dangerous, but fuck it. They tie her up in a closet full of things that she could use to attack them if she gets loose. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bonnie's here. <laughs> Bonnie gets the idea that she's going to go call shit in, like call the police. Uh, but these crackheads are fucking sneaky and sneak behind her and get her too. <laughs> Like these crackheads are apparently fucking trained by the Assassin's Guild because they just appear behind everybody and are like, oh, you know, like they did that shit twice. And I was like, get the fuck out. Of when did they even come from? You know, like where, where, did, how many of them are there? Where did you uh, come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Kind of. Yeah, like, honestly, that, that song epitomizes those characters. <laughs> yeah, they're they're so bad. Um. I have that Maya and Bonnie are trapped together. Maya seemingly could have gotten out at any point there, but didn't for some reason until Bonnie got there. Uh, Bonnie feels during that time when they get loose, Bonnie's like, now is the time to have a heart to heart. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk while the crackheads are coming. Uh, and Maya's grand plan is to punch fucking Bonnie in the eye. Yeah, for some reason. I don't know why. For she fucking that. reasons. That so was like distra it was like a real like uh sixties cartoon way of distracting the bad guys. <laughs> like they were all so shook that she punched her in the eye. They also yeah. don't know the connection between Bonnie and Maya, so it's like Neither not do the I. shock. <laughs> yes, shocker. Uh like <laughs> so I don't know why she thought that that was gonna happen they were best friends 20 years ago but haven't <laughs> talked since yeah I, I i don't know i have in my notes i don't know why she thought punching bonnie would have them take her with them but it works also ain't no way one of those crackheads were steady on the trigger you know like one yeah. of them easily could have fucking shot also why didn't one of them just i don't know shoot her in her fucking working leg yeah dude honestly i feel it i think this entire show could have existed without Bonnie. Like that character yeah. is so unnecessary. Like it's another example of just like subplots that went started and kind of went nowhere. It's just like introducing characters that just are kind of there. Bonnie is just there the whole time and not do doing anything. She confronts Maya once about like, hey, how you're kind of shitty. How come you didn't like call or text me? I guess only text you can't call. Um, but and then like just gets tied up twice and then uh, nothing really happens with Bonnie at all no. and their relationship. It's really strange that she's even in the fucking show. 
that's kind of what I was saying in in our first episode breakdown a little bit where I was like this this they have a really good cast of people like that De- I I'm probably going to butcher her name but Devry Devry Jacobs who plays Bonnie is in Res Dogs and she's a really great actress and it's like why have her play Bonnie if she's not even going to get any chance to act or anything also like super side note like they gave her the worst fucking outfit possible in that show like they made her look so like frumpy and they made her look like like it's just I know it's a super side note, but it's like, why have this actress in this in this show to like not have her talk to give her terrible dialogue and then on top of that, make her like look terrible. <laughs> and it's like, I I don't know, it, like you were saying, it's it's a it's a waste of a character. Um, we also got to mention too that the fat the 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 fat crackhead who gets shot in the stunt double thing, like oh, yeah. the editing of this of this show where when uh Maya shoots one of the lights out with her homemade laser uh Home Alone gun, um she shoots the crackhead with fucking bullet or with uh bolts and they switch the they switch the her body out and it's like an obvious a different person because she goes from like 300 pound woman to like a hundred pound woman with pillows in her body <laughs> it's just it's, it's just so it's just so fucking bad uh i also have my notes that vicky gets killed in the most unnecessary show of blood and gore in the show like they just killed yeah, him and he falls I, on the table they, and they like, definitely the just fuck? added unnecessary blood and gore and then caught like slap a tv ma rating on it like it's edgy don't worry. Yeah. And then it's just like oh, only like three guys get like the shit kicked out of them enough for blood comes out. And then they're like, yep, that's there it is. See? <laughs> yeah. The the drag, the Dragula fight scene's cool. Maya's kicking ass. Like she uses her foot knife thing and like is running around with it. Um, That temp leg that she wasn't supposed to be running on. Uh, She's doing a bunch of running and a bunch of kicking. It has no problem. So, uh, Yo, that's cool. And if you're keeping count at home for how many times I mentioned the giant fucking hole in her side, uh, yeah, that's healed, by the way. That they don't ever mention that fucking giant hole in her side again. She's good. She's good. Um uh it looks like somebody's gonna die in this scene, right? But just when someone's gonna die, Kingpin calls and is like, Hey, don't kill anybody, just let them all go. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. After that happens, like Bonnie's going to go call the police like a normal person, and Maya's like, Don't do that, no police. We don't want any action going on here. Yeah, I just want like, don't yeah. <laughs> Says Bonnie... the criminal. Bonnie's like, Why did you punch me? She's like, I need to do something. Yeah, she's like, I I had to make it look real. I I hate okay. that part. Um at the very end of the episode, um, uh, Maya gets uh, her real her real leg from Scully. This leg she can definitely run on and jump on. And uh, basically Scully tells uh, Maya like victim blames her and is like, well, you could have talked to Chula too. It's like, motherfucker, she was a kid for almost 15 years of that like time in which she left you. Like Chula was a grown ass fucking woman. She easily could have picked up the fucking phone or sent the letter or I don't know, drive the fucking New York if she really gave a shit about about Maya. If she really gave that much of a fuck about her, you know, like don't fucking blame Maya for that. Granted, like as an adult, if Maya wanted to, she could, but there was no reason to. Like she was a kid during all that. So <laughs> whatever. You know, at Chula Honestly, at that young of an age, it was like how old was she? Like five? I think she was like seven when she left. Like after twenty years, like they would probably forget more of each other. Like, like I don't, I don't know. Like if they there, if if there was zero contact between them for that whole time, like I don't understand why everybody's like, oh my god, yeah, what's up, dog? Like, you know. It was crazy to me the the amount of people that remembered how to do ASL. The fact that we never even yes. met Biscuits and yes. he was just signing out and you're like, no, literally, Who are you? literally all of them like must have been practicing this whole time. Yeah, right? it's, that's because that's a fucking Shula, skill. Shula literally goes, 
Oh, I keep it up for my granddaughter. You haven't seen her in two decades. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, don't you think at some point you'd be like, why do am I keep why do I keep doing this? My I for all I know, my granddaughter is fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. Who else are you talking to through sign? Like, who is Biscuits talking to through sign? That's what I mean. Nobody. Like, the implication there is like that they just kept practicing sign language for 20 years in the hopes that they would see Maya again. Yeah, it, it's, it's fucking kind of weird. It's weird. It it takes me out of it. And also at, at the very end of the show, King of this episode, Kingpin appears like the fucking Slenderman in the background. That shit scared the fuck out of me. I actually didn't see him. So when he like when they like zoomed in on the background, I was like, oh, because <laughs> like, oh. he looks so creepy with his fucking eye. Uh, my final note here was that I don't mind the pacing of this episode, but like you can't think about the plot too much or it ruins everything for the show. Characters don't have time to marinate. The Bonnie and Maya reunion was stupid. And just to have fighting for fighting with no consequences at the end ruin a lot of this episode. Yeah. Um, ironically enough, this episode might be my favorite because of how like comical it is but like i just laugh when i'm not supposed to laugh the family Uh, stunt double really does it for you (laughs) i i see like i I just laugh when i'm not supposed to laugh when it's supposed to be serious i can't find myself really like in-depthly involved in the show because like with every two seconds there's something bad happening and it's hard to like get involved in this show. Um, but that's all I have about episode three. Episode three might be the best episode of the series. And that's like not saying a lot. So, yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys like episode three? Uh, let us know in the comments below and while you're down there. Leave a like.